This is Francisco Pulgar Viral with FKI Quality. I would like to speak with you today about the concept called first time yield or first time quality. I am presenting to you this concept as one that is a superior level of quality. What do we mean by first time yield or first time quality? It's quality that happens without rework, which after all is really how companies set out to do business without reward and trying to delight their customers right and do things by them right the first time. Let's have a very simplified view of what our uh, company is about for this example. Let's say that we have a company that sells, makes and delivers a certain product. You can imagine anything, it can be a food product, can be a window, can be any type of service actually even. But let's pretend for a minute that uh, we're going to be assigning certain levels of performance to each one of these three functions. That level of performance, I'm going to call it a yield. And so, for the first one, the yield is going to be as follows. The yield of the selling function is going to be, let's say, one in which out of the selling function, what we need to have is not just a sale, but also a purchase order with all the information correctly entered without any errors. Let's say the right customer name and address, the right description of the product to be uh, to be uh, bought by the customer, etc. All the information has to be perfect. Let's just say that 90 times out of 100, we actually do a perfect job. And so that yield would be equivalent to 90 good out of 100. Let's say now that the make function at the factory or you know the provision of the service actually also has a certain yield. And so that yield for the make function is going to be similarly 90 out of 100. I'm just going to write this number in a different way. 90 divided by 100 would be 0 0.90. But it is obviously exactly the same amount. Now, the actual delivery, which may include transportation, installation, and some elements of customer service, will also have a certain yield. That is, uh, we are not, we're not doing this perfectly, but as close as possible. And let's just say that it also has a 90% level of performance. And so the yield of the deliver function would also be 90%. By the way, I'm writing 90% in three different ways, but the number is exactly the same. So now let's simulate this operation for a thousand clients. What would happen if you have a thousand clients that come to you, to your company, they really expect terrific service. Let's see what happens. Let's run the numbers. So we have now here 1,000 customers that are approaching you. I can very well imagine that these customers are just happy and they truly expect you know, terrific things from doing business with your company. Now, we know that the yield is telling us the amount of good products or good, you know, desirable outcomes out of this function based fr from a total. And so we know that it's 90 out of 100. 90 out of 100 would mean that out of the 1,000, we only are getting 90% out of those ones, and that would be 900. This means that only 900 orders perfectly capture the desires of the customers, information about the customers, and this is, this is what then is going to be passed on to the next function, when the, in this case is make, in order for us to actually create that product that a customer has bought from us. Now, the make function also has a 90% yield, which then would mean that 810 of these are perfectly made. Where does the 810 number come from? Well, it comes from simply taking the original input, the 900 that come into make, and multiplying it by the yield. And this multiplication produces the 810. Then, what we have here is that out of the original 1000, we have 810 perfectly captured orders and perfectly made products, which is really what the customer wanted. Now, the third step is to deliver those products. We will do the same calculation to determine how many perfectly ordered, made, and, delivery, and delivered products are actually the outcome at the end of all of these three steps. And so what we have here is a similar multiplication. 810 would have to be multiplied by 90%. And this is going to give us a resulting total of 729 happy customers. So what you see here is that 
uh, there's a, an interesting contrast, maybe a surprising contrast. Let's, let's look at what has just happened. We started with 1,000 customers that we really wanted, they were expecting to do, you know, to have a great experience with us. And out of these ones, without rework, we end up with only 729, which actually got this. What type of yield is this? Let's just calculate it. The general concept of a yield is as follows. Yield is really nothing more. This is a, a, sim a simple explanation, but it's also accurate. Is outcomes that you would be considered good divided by what was expected. And so when we apply this concept to the total operation, right, all of it, what we get is that the good part is 729, and those who expected to, good, to get you know, good products and services from us are actually all the 1,000 that started doing business with us. This ratio results in a yield of 0 0.729, which may also be written as 72.9%. So this creates a really an important contrast, and that is that each one of these functions was thinking about themselves as being, let's call it, a 90 percenter. And let's just assume for the sake of this discussion and to keep the number simple, that 90 percent is a good, it's a desirable, it's an acceptable level of performance. It's something to be proud of. Okay? I know this may sound like a, an exaggeration, but let's just pretend for a minute. So what you have is that you have three teams. There's the sales function, which is pretty happy about themselves because they are a 90 percenter. You have the operations that actually make the stuff, which also could very well feel happy and proud of themselves because they also are operating at 90%. And then you have the delivery function and all the customer service, which may also think that they are pretty good because they're operating at 90%. And yet, when you get all of them together, you don't sustain 90% uh, performance. Rather, what you have is a much lower number, about 73%, which really would come up as a surprise. Now, this is the kicker. Who believes that the performance is about 73%? The customer. Because these are the 729 which actually got a smooth service without any bumps along the road, without any rework, without any surprises. And they are the ones who would judge your operation as one being at 73%. So there's a contrast between the internal view. Internally, we may think that we are actually operating at 90%, but externally, we actually are operating at about 73%. And so this is a, there's a tremendous um, clash, if you would, or, or, or conflict of perceptions as to really what is happening. This, by the way, is one of the effects of having a siloed mentality, a limited mentality, which is usually fostered or the, the, the result of how we are organized, how we are uh, incented in our work, and just also the limitations of the reporting systems that we have, which rarely are company-wide and are much more frequently just in silos. The selling function worries about selling, production worries about production, delivery worries about delivery, and nobody has a complete view of what's happening. W. Edward Deming tells us that a company really is a system which is the multiple functions interconnected. We can see here that actually this is the level of performance of the system at about 73%. Very different from the limited um, perception that each one of the functions may have. We will continue exploring the consequences of the notion of first-time yield in a future video. Thank you for your time.